How's it? Welcome to another episode of Game Nights. You know, this show is officially sponsored by Wizards of the Coast now, yeah. which is allowing us to do some really exciting things like fly in some awesome guests from out of state, from even out of the country. Mm. Our roster of future guests, I mean, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's it's making me pretty stoked. It is pretty exciting. One of the main sponsors of the show as well is Card Kingdom, so make sure you use our affiliate link, cardkingdom.com slash command zone. The next time you are out to buy some magic cards, you're going to buy cards anyway, and we built four brand new commander decks for this episode. So if any of those cards or singles in there interest you, go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Fastest shipping in the business, hands down. And the final way to support this show is to go to patreon.com slash command zone. You know, patrons get a little bit of a reward whenever possible. We allow them a sneak peek, a preview, if you will, of the Game Nights episode. So patrons, I hope you're enjoying this episode for the second time, or third maybe, time, maybe? Third time, yeah, yeah. Time, fifth time, sixth time? Wow, that's Josh, they're big fans. Josh, you probably watched this like a hundredth time, right? Uh, a thousand. <laughs> One thing that's open to everyone, though, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the episode because we have awesome giveaways. We have a ton of product. And a lot. We'll reward you, the viewer. So make sure you stick around to the end of the episode to find out how you can win. All right. We'll see you guys on the other side. On to the game. Jimmy Wong, and this is Kiwi. Ew. Welcome to Game Nights. <laughs> Perfect. Hi everyone, I'm Ashlyn Rose. I'm a cosplayer for Magic the Gathering. I'm super excited to be here today and to get to play some Commander. This episode is very exciting because we're doing something we've never done before. No, no, it's okay, we're playing Commander. What I mean is, we're gonna be playing in costume. Hi, I'm Christine Sprankle, and I, uh, I dress up like a weirdo on the weekends. <laughs> We've brought on two of the biggest names in Magic Cosplay. Cosplaying is where you make a costume of a character you like. It's one of the best forms of self-expression. It's just a really fun and unique way to connect with people and just show your love for a game. Today I am cosplaying Bona, Butcher of Magan. So my deck is all about life game. I pretty much want to blow up everything I can with Bona and have the life to do it. Keep it simple. The character I'm cosplaying today is Admiral Beckett Brass. So I'm gonna be playing a bunch of pirates. And basically I get all my pirates in there by giving them evasion, have them steal everyone's stuff like a good pirate does. So I guess Jimmy and Josh were going to kind of dive into cosplay. Jimmy and I are always saying we like to try new things, we like challenges. I'm really interested to see what they do because the merfolk looks really hard. I don't even know how I would do that because it looks like it'd be a bunch of latex work. You know, Josh and I are industry professionals and I will say I know a couple things about how to make a costume. And the dinosaur, I, I don't even know where to begin with that. I'm expecting him to strut out in beautiful dinosaur plumage. It's very cute. <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> <laughs> so if you couldn't tell by my costume, today I will be playing Gashok, Sun's Avatar. The strategy of the deck is I'm playing a ton of ramp spells, a lot of rampant growths and Kodama's reaches to get as much mana on the board as possible. And I'm really excited because I haven't really played that many tribal decks, but I do love attacking with creatures and beating face. So I'm gonna be playing the Tishana Voice of Thunder deck. It's all about getting a lot of creatures onto the battlefield and then casting Tishana and drawing a bunch of cards. So it is a tribal deck. It's an elf tribal deck though. Because elves tap for mana and merfolk really don't. Listen, I know everybody wants it to be merfolk tribal, but Tishana doesn't say all your merfolk get plus one or anything. So Tishana doesn't care, so I don't see why you guys should care. <laughs> all right, Kiwi, are you ready to dominate with some dinosaurs? Insert, <laughs> let's play. Good job, Kiwi. Good job, Kiwi. Okay, as is tradition, we must introduce you to the show. Sprinkle, welcome to game night. Consider yourself knighted. First <laughs> one Okay, Ashley Rose. The hat. There we 
we go. Yes, welcome to Game Nights. <laughs> Only one may stand. And it's gonna be me. All right, I will play a Path of Ancestry tap. This is one of the new Commander 17 cards, and honestly, I can't think of a better first land you'd want to play in a tribal deck. I'm gonna play a Cavern of Souls, naming elves. What? <laughs> While the rest of us are winning the flavor game, Josh is over there snorkeling when he's actually in the middle of a forest hanging out with elves. And then I will cast an elf, Oriole Druid. So this is exactly what I want my deck to be doing, playing a creature that creates mana on every turn possible so that I can cast Tishana early, but I also have a lot of creatures on the board, so this is the perfect start. I'm gonna take that off now. Hey, welcome yeah, back. Yeah, so I can see. <laughs> I'm going to play a Reliquary Tower. I have no maximum hand size. And then play Expedition Map. Oh, these turn one plays. Yes. In Commander, you can have some of the most powerful lands ever made in Magic. So I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the tongue out concentration. I will play Path of Ancestry. Tap. Kids, don't do this at home. See how the card gets bent? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> LP now. I will play Scalding Tarn. I'm gonna go ahead and sacrifice it and take one damage. I'm gonna find a Blood Crypt, pay two life because it's gonna come into play untapped. Boop, boop. And then I will use both of these to play Kite Sail Freebooter. Because of Path of Ancestry, I will scry one and I will target. Okay, just don't choose me. Don't choose me. Choose somebody else. I'll get to see their hand. This is gonna be great. Hmm. I really wasn't sure what Josh's deck was. Like, he had mentioned elves, even though he had a merfolk, so I knew there was gonna be some type of shenanigan, but I wasn't sure what. I think I'm gonna go with Josh. Uh, okay. So, this is pretty bad. Okay, so I have to reveal my hand? Yes, your entire hand. So, here's what my hand looks like, everybody. Non-creature, non-land. Yes. Ooh, Cryptolithrite's really good. Cryptolithrite looks a little threatening. Hmm. I'm gonna go with Cryptolithrite. So that gets exiled until that thing dies? Yes. When you keep a hand, you're counting on a certain sequence of plays, and the Crypto of Right was very key to that because with Imperius Perfect, I'm creating one ones that tap for mana. Everything was gonna be awesome. And now everything's horrible. Horrible. All right, I'm gonna take this off and uh, pass turn. Okay. I will play Imperius Perfect. So this card's very good in the deck. It's less good because Cryptolithrite got taken from me, but at the same time, I want a lot of creatures on the board when I cast my general because I want to turn all those creatures into more cards in my hand. And then I'll pass the turn. I will play a Shambling Vent, and I will also pass my turn. Oh, um, no. And while he's doing that, I'll just... I'm going to play an Ancient Tomb. I'm gonna tap three, cast Rampaging Ferocidon. This creature does damage any time a creature enters the battlefield to his controller. That punishes me for every creature that hits the board. That is gonna be super annoying. And it also says players can't gain life. So the whole point of my deck is to gain life. And Jimmy was like, how about no? I'm gonna take two damage from the ancient tomb and I will also trigger Path of Ancestry. So I'm going to scry one. Then I will pass turn. All right, I will play a Chromatic Lantern. Ooh, nice. great card. And pass turn. I'll tap three. I'll play a Chasm Skulker. One of the problems with the deck is you're just really overextended into board wipes and Chasm Skulker is a way for if you get board wiped, you still have a bunch of creatures left over at the end of it. Uh, Rampaging for us, I'm gonna trigger and rawr, deal one damage to you. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then I will, pass the turn. I will tap two and play Thought Vessel. You know, reiterate the fact that I have no maximum. You really have no maximum. I really, hands really hands don't like have maximum, maximum hand size. <laughs> and pass the turn. I'm gonna tap four, taking two damage for Ancient Tomb. And play Dalkin Ori. This is one of my favorite cards in all of Magic the Gathering. I basically get to draw a card, pass turn for the rest of the game, and choose when I take my turn and use my mana. Then I'll go to combat. Christine, I will swing at you with the Rampaging Frost now for three damage. It's rude. Real rude. Dinosaur's got a dino. Now we'll pass the turn. Okay. I'll play a Steam Vents and shock myself. Ooh. And then I will play Marchesa, the <gasps> Black Rose. Yay! Uh, because of Path of Ancestry, I will scry one. Her deck is all about attacking, and she's really weak to something like a board wipe. But if you have Marchesa on the board, then that means that you're gonna be really, really immune to people taking out your creatures. Because all of a sudden, they're gonna come back from the graveyard. Rampaging for us, I'm gonna trigger and roar! Ah. Take a damage. Josh is on the throne, so, and I'll swing at Josh. It'll trigger a dethrone, which will put a 1 1 counter on it. So I take two, it's flyer. I have nothing that can block fire. 
I'm not trying to pick on one or anything, but I gotta get the counter, so. I mean, you already took a card from me, you know. You can spread the love a little, hit some. I know I'm on the throne, but come on, that's only one additional damage. Okay, and then at the end of your turn, I will tap Imperius Perfect, make an Elf Warrior creature token. And when that enters, it'll trigger Rampaging Ferocidon. Ferocidon. And I'll take one damage. <laughs> okay, then I'll untap. Draw a card, which will trigger Chasm Skulker. That will put a 1-1 counter on it. <laughs> then I will play From Beyond. Oh, man. <laughs> which is going to hurt with that Ferocidon, but what can you do? you got to play your deck. Listen, I just have to continue with my game plan and hope that at some point in the future I can get rid of that dinosaur. And then I will pass turn. At the end of your turn, I will crack my expedition map and search for Urbor, Tomb of Yogmoth. That was a good card. And I will put that in my hand. All right, so my turn? Yep. I will play Urbor. Swap. Big surprise. <laughs> and I will play Sarah's Ascendant. Oh my Ooh. gosh. It, it's a one casting 6-6 six, six flyer. You can't beat that. But he's just not at his full potential. Thankfully, Jimmy's Dinosaur makes it where it can't get in the life. So it's not quite as good as it could be. Doesn't even make sense. How is this dinosaur preventing life gain? What, is, what kind of mystical powers does a dinosaur have? Take one from Rampaging Ferocidon. And then I will play Underworld Connections. Oh. And put it on my reliquary tower. Card advantage is good. Honestly, I'm not that worried about Sprinkle because she hasn't really looked in my direction. I'm more worried that Ashlyn's picking on me. And I will pass turn. All right, I'm going to untap. Oh wow! Nice. Yeah, I'm using uh, his my, my his. Oh, arm you got his... strategy though. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, as they say. Then I will play a Temple Garden, untapped. Take two damage, and because I have a dog in Ori, I can do whatever I want whenever I want. <laughs> I'll pass turn. All right, I'll attack Josh again. Triggering a dethrone again, so I get another counter. I take three. Yay! One, two, three. No longer on the throne though. Woohoo! <laughs> I guess. And then I will play a Steel Hellkite. That's so good against Josh and all his tokens. Oh. <laughs> you know, when someone's picking on you, there's things that you don't want them to do. And play Steel Hellkite is at the top of that list. <sighs> Rampaging Frost on Roars, and you take a damage. Ah, uh, yes. All right, pass turn. Okay, on upkeep from beyond will trigger, and I will make an Eldrazi Scion. And that will trigger the Raging Ferocidon. I take one. Yep. And then I will draw a card, and that will trigger Chasm Skulker. And it will become a 3-3. Three, three. And then I'm going to tap 3. Oh, will you? And I'm going to play a new card. Oh. Growing Rites of Itlamok. Oh. I am going to reveal a Findhorn Elves. So that goes in my hands. And then I will go to my end step. And because I have five creatures, I only need four, I will transform the growing rights of Itlamok into Itlamok Cradle of the Sun. This is terrifying, by the way, because I don't have any way of dealing with it. No one has any way of dealing with it. Josh is gonna be able to pump out a ton of mana. Okay, at the end of your turn, I will use my secret underworld connections and lose one life and draw a card. And then untap, play Cabal Coffers. Christine has Urborg and Cabal Coffers out, which is one of the best ways to ramp in black really quickly. Life is sweet. It's very sweet. Tap two for Cabal Coffers. That will make five black and Shambling Vents for one white and bring out Bona. She has arrived. This worries me because she can blow up my Hellkite. Luckily, I'm pretty sure I know what her first target is. So now I have an answer to that filthy dinosaur. Vengeance will soon be mine. Just gotta wait. Just gotta be patient. It's coming. Rampaging Ferocidon will trigger and do one damage to you. Oh. Rampaging Ferocidon is doing a lot of work, but at the same time, it's also making everyone hate me. Oh, Jimmy, man, I don't hate you. I just hate the Rampaging Ferocidon. Yeah, I hate the card, not the player, but you're I, still attacking the player. I Well, I mean, if I don't have, you know, creature removal, I have to try and do player removal. Isn't, oh, isn't that boy. something Mel said once? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you know, why not instead find an answer to the card by doing something like going to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Card nice. Kingdom is one of the sponsors of the show. And if you're going to buy magic products, sealed product, or singles,
Animals. They are the absolute number one place to do it. And you know our other sponsor, Ultra Pro. They are making awesome eclipse sleeves. They make all the Ixalan theme stuff, so like the play mats and the sleeves we used in this episode. They have gravity dice. I would suggest going to cardgame.com slash command zone and ordering Ultra Pro stuff. Then you're double dipping. That's what yeah. we call value. That is really helping to keep the lights on here at Game Nights. In fact, I mean, what are you doing? I'm going to go to Card Kingdom and I'm going to order up an answer to that rampaging for Ostadon. Well, given their fast shipping, it may get here in time to it actually. It certainly make a might, yeah. Then actually, you know what? Well, we filmed the episode a month ago. What are you doing? <laughs> no, no, I can fix this. Movie magic. Oh, I would love to see you try. Well, stay tuned to find out if anything happens to that rampaging for Ostadon. Let's get back to the show. Okay, at the end of your turn, I will tap five mana and lose two life from Ancient Tomb to flash out Mind's Eye. My plan to like get out front, do some damage, and hopefully ramp into bigger dinosaurs hasn't come to fruition. And this is gonna be a really good way for me to hopefully catch up. I need to make my land drops. I need to get more ramp and I need to build out my board. Otherwise I'm in a really, really tricky position. Hmm, lots of scary things out there in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I'm just gonna pass turn. So I'm stuck at four lands and I'm hoping that Mind's Eye is gonna get me out of this hole. But the thing is, I can only draw cards when the opponents draw cards, so that means I can't play lands on their turns, so I've just put myself another turn behind. Things aren't looking good. I will draw a card. Okay, when you do, I will use Mind's Eye to tap one and also draw a card. All right, I will move to combat. I will swing the Steel Hellkite Kite at Josh and the Kite Steel Freebooter at Jimmy. I will take three damage, I cannot block. I cannot block, I will take five damage. All right, and because Steel Hellkite did damage to you, I will pay zero to destroy each non-land permanent with commander mana cost zero. Josh has this land and a bunch of creatures on the board, so I just decided to help alleviate the problem of him having a bunch of mana. It's not the best, it's not the worst. I lose two things, I'm gonna be able to immediately replace them, so. And then I will play a Phyrexian Metamorph, copying my Steel Hellkite. Oh no. Oh, wow. amazing. Okay, this is pretty bad. I don't have any flyers, I don't have any protection from flyers in my hand or on the board. She can just kind of, for fun, blow up everything I have. All right, you take a damage from Rampaging Ferocidon. And then I will pay two to play a Daring Saboteur. Ooh. And because it's a human pirate, I will scry one. And you'll also take a damage from the Rampaging yeah, Ferocidon. Yeah, And then, pass turn. All right, on your end step, I will activate Imperius Perfect. Make an Elf Warrior creature token. Then I will activate Orin Reef the Vastwood to put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. Take a damage. I will take my one damage and then I will <laughs> Untap. And on my upkeep, From Beyond will trigger. I will make an Eldrazi Scion. Take a damage! How much damage have I taken from that thing? Oh, like eight I'm... or nine? Your deck is not built well against the Rampaging for us. <laughs> no, that much. But... Um, and then I will draw a card. That's going to trigger Chasm Skulker. It becomes a 4 4. And Mind's Eye will also trigger when you draw a card. So I'll tap one and draw. All right. I guess I'll go to combat. Yep. And I will attack Jimmy with a 4 4 Chasm Skulker and a 3 3 Elf Warrior. Okay. I'll take it all. Take seven. I'm at a very low life total now. I've just been taking a ton of damage from everyone because of all the hate I've generated. I will start by playing Elvish Promenade, make three elves, and I will take three damage from the, what's it called again? Rampaging Ferocidon. From that jerk. Don't forget it. Then I will tap the Itlamok, Cradle of the Sun. So I have eight green mana floating. With one green mana, I will play Findhorn Elves. I'll take a damage for Raging Ferocidon. So I have seven green mana floating. I'll add a blue to it and play Tishana. Oh no. Voice of Thunder. Take a damage. Trigger her ETB effect, which is draw a card for each creature I control. I have two, four, six, eight, ten. So I'll draw ten cards. Wow. So Josh does, he just played like a million different things. Draws a billion cards. Lots of stuff is happening right now. Oh God. And because I just drew 10 cards, Chasm Skulker will get 10 counters. Oh my goodness. It's getting a little dicey up in here. I'm worried. This isn't looking good. He, I don't know. He may feel like I've been, I don't know, picking on him a little bit or something. <laughs> uh, in response, you're drawing a butt ton of cards. Mind's eye will trigger 10 times. I'm gonna spend three mana and draw three cards. Okay. I still have the one green floating. My land for turn I'm gonna play is Mystery Reinforce. I'm gonna immediately crack it. I'll pay one life and I will find Tropical Island. With the one green and a blue, I'll play Coiling Oracle. 
trigger rampaging for Ostodon. I'll take a damage. I've taken so much damage from that thing. Uh, I will reveal the top card of my library. It's an Elvish Mystic, so I'll put that card into my hand, and then I will pass the turn. All this is great. It looks great. However, there are two Steel Hellkites on the table, and there's a really good chance that like 80% of my stuff is gone by the time my turn gets back to me. So I, I would be more excited, but it, it doesn't feel like it's going to matter. And at the end of your turn, I will use my Underworld Connections again, draw a card, and lose a life. And then I play Isolated Chapel and activate Cabal Coffers and play Revel and Riches. I love winning commander games in horrible, tricky ways that you don't even actually kill anybody. Revel and Riches is really interesting because Ashlyn can't actually use the Steel Hellkites against all my stuff because that'll turn into treasure for Sprinkle. And if Sprinkle has 10 treasure, she wins the game. So it kind of weirdly protects me from the Hellkites a little bit. I it's weird, but I like it. And then I will play Drana's Emissary. Take one because of that filthy dinosaur. <laughs> That dinosaur is filthy. It's, it's out of control. You're gonna kill it now, right? So yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Go to combat, mm -hmm. and I'm going to swing both my creatures at Jimmy. The four blocks, I'm going to activate Bona to destroy this rampaging dinosaur. Finally. And because your creature dies, Rebel and Riches triggers, and I get a treasure. This is awesome. She gets rid of the dinosaur. She protects me from the Hellkites. I mean, I'd give her a hug, but those eyes are really scary. <laughs> and uh, I pay seven life. Okay, uh, I will take five. I'm gonna go to 15. And because of lifelink, I'll gain five life. I also have four commander damage from Vona. I don't think that will matter. I do believe the fun is done, so your turn. I am in just the worst position. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Even if I do board wipe and kill all creatures, well guess what? Christine just wins because of Revelin Riches. So I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place, or just two dinosaurs, or in this case, a Vona, a Steel Hellkite, and a Giant Tishana. Um, I'm just gonna pass turn. Okay. Draw a card. Okay, when you draw a card, mine's I will trigger and I will tap one to draw the card. Okay. Hmm. This is where it gets tough. I don't really have quite enough for lethal on Josh, so I just gotta deal with Vona and everything over on Sprinkle's side, and then we'll come back to Josh. All right, I'm gonna swing the two Hellkites at Sprinkle. I will block with Drana's Emissary. So, Drana's Emissary dies. One gets through, so I take five. And because Steel Hellkite did damage to you, I'll tap five to blow up everything you have that costs five mana. Rude. Ooh, wow. Bye bye. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did to deserve this. <laughs> Probably not a lot of sympathy for a vampire, I was like. I will uh, fast turn. All right, I will untap. From beyond will trigger. I will make an Eldrazi Scion. I will not take a damage. <laughs> Feels so good. Then I will draw a card, which will trigger Chasm Skulker, which now becomes a 15-15 creature. Okay, what's everybody at? 15, 18, 31, 25. I can take out either Sprinkle or Jimmy. I don't have quite enough to take out Ashlyn. I will go to combat. Okay, here's how we're gonna do it. Ashlyn, all this stuff is coming at you. Oh boy. Jimmy. No. Oh, man. Unfortunately, I'm in the weakest position at the table. I have no blockers. I really am posing no threat to anyone. Josh, no! My co-host! My ally! No! These cute dinosaurs! Don't do it! Hi, my name is Jimmy Dunan. Wong Dunan. Dunan Okay, I will lock Imperius Perfect with Marchessa and the self with my freebooter. Okay, and then you take damage. I can probably deal with that much damage right now. I'm at a pretty comfortable life total, so I'm not too worried about that. And then I'm gonna play Spontaneous Generation, which gives me a sapper link for every card in my hand. I have 10. Oh my gosh. Then I will cast Jiraga Tree Speaker, which means I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 creatures on board. At this point, it doesn't seem like there's any reason not to just play out everything I can. Tap the cradle for 20 green mana. So again, a bunch of stuff happens. And then I will play an Elvish Archdruid, Argothian Elder, Jorreal, Empress of Beasts. A lot more stuff comes out again. Yay, just more stuff keeps coming out. Elvish Mystic, Wood Elves, Oracle of Moldiah. I'll 
reveal the top card of my library. And then I will tap Ornn Reef the Vastwood and I'll oh put a plus one plus one God. counter on all of the green creatures that enter the battlefield this turn. Josh doing Josh things over here. <laughs> And then while I figure out the dice situation to grow all these guys, I'll, I'll go ahead and pass turn. At the end of your turn, though, I will, again, use my Underworld Connections, draw a card, and lose a life. And then I activate Cabal Coffers and cast Sword of Feast and Famine. And I'm going to equip it. Okay, this is pretty bad, actually, because I can't block the Sarah Ascendant now because I have protection from green and all I have is green creatures. And then I will Underworld Connections, draw a card. Lose life. Lose life. And I will play Staff of Domination. So I pretty much need to get Josh dead or down enough to where Ashlyn can swing in with hell kites. I don't know. I will swing at Josh for three. So I will take three. One, two, three. This is great. He's now at a point where I can swing in on my turn and hit him for lethal, so I'm feeling pretty good about this play right now. That'll trigger Sword of Feast and Famine, so I have to discard a card. I'll discard Thought Vessel. And because of lifelink, I'll gain three, and I will untap all of my lands. All right, I can untap Underworld Connections and hopefully draw something, anything, to just keep me alive just, just for a little longer. I'm going to Underworld Connections again, mm -hmm. lose a life, draw a card, and I mean, I drew something okay. All right, we're gonna have a party here. Huh? Oh boy. Vampire party? So I'm going to tap out and sacrifice my treasure. Bro, and bro. I'm going to play oh. Debt of the Deathless. X is equal to eight. Oh. oh. I gained 32 and everybody takes 16. Oh my gosh. I can't believe what just happened. That just kills me. Sorry. Not sorry. Okay, I take 16, which leaves me at negative one. I don't even know how to act out. I'll pay you next month, I pro- oh. <laughs> like, how do you act out dying to the uh, debt? Did I take 16? You're gonna be at five? Oh my goodness. I'm now sitting pretty at 54 life. Pass the turn. This is really interesting because we've seen these situations before and it can go either way. We're at a high life total, but no board, but your opponent's at like single digit life. All right, I will go ahead and just turn everything sideways. Wow. They uh, all get dethroned triggers. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, so that's gonna be 23. Yeah, you go down to 31. Getting there. <laughs> and because Steel Hellkite did damage to you, I will pay three to blow up everything that costs three on your end, and then pay one for my other Steel Hellkite trigger to blow up the Saracenet. <laughs> So because I dealt damage to you, Daring Saboteur will draw me a card if I want. And then so I will discard my Wonder. And because it's in my graveyard, everyone gains flying. <laughs> Seems good. And then I will also play Dead Eye Tracker and Dowsing Dagger. And when it comes into play, I will give you two zero two plant tokens. Thanks. You're welcome. I'm not really worried about giving her the two defenders because now all my stuff has flying, so I'll just get over them anyway. I will pass turn. So Ashlyn's at five. Can we, can we do this? I'm going to use Cabal Coffers and tap out to create 12 mana. And I will play Tithe Drinker. I have 10 mana left. Okay, that has extort. That's, that's bad. Then I'm going to play Kristen Talisman. I will extort. So Ashlyn loses one, you gain one. I am very worried right now. I'm, I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I have six mana left. Then I will play Land Tax. I pay extort again. Ooh, Ooh it's gosh. good. It's good. <laughs> this is not looking good. <laughs> and then I play Burnished Heart. I extort again. Ooh. Oh gosh. Now I'm down to two. And that's all I can do. And then I ran out of mana. That's fine. I wasn't worried. I knew. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I will bring out myself for the final battle. <laughs> Oh, she's here. Admiral Beckett Brass. Because of Path of Ancestry, I will scry one. And then I will play Captain Lannery Storm, who has haste. Oh my goodness. They all have flying. Yeah, they all yes. have a problem. And they're all going to get dethroned. Yes. All right, we're going to turn them all except myself sideways. I like to oversee things. Your, your management. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Dethrone will trigger. How do vampires die on the plane of Ixalan? I wouldn't know, since I'm still alive. <laughs> 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 All right, good game. Right, good good game. job, Ashlyn. They say dead men tell no tales, but I didn't die. So I'm gonna tell you, I won. 
It was awesome having Christina and Ashlyn on the show. Being able to play in costume for the set based on the tribes that we were doing was a ton of fun. I just think it's amazing and awesome that every person who's a fan of magic is enriched by the fact that they are doing what they do. It's just a really fun and unique way to connect with people and just see them be excited about a card that I really like and they also really like. The amount of talent, dedication, and hard work that they put into their costumes, it's just inspiring to be around people like that. What did you like about the day or the deck or anything? I was excited to get out of costume and finally pee. <laughs> It was a super great experience. I'm so happy I got to be here and play Commander with Jimmy and Josh and Sprinkle. Hey, Dino! What you think about that game? Well, it was great, except not many dinosaurs popped out. Huh, Rex? You know yeah. your, your mouth's not supposed to move, right? Yeah, of course. That sucks, didn't it? Jimmy, girl, Jimmy, how do you do bees? You think you're doing good with the other letters? <laughs> Congratulations, you made it to the end of the episode, and look at all of this swag we have to give away to you. Big thanks to Ultra Pro, as always, for supporting the show, for sponsoring us, for providing a yeah. ton of awesome stuff to give away. We've got a Citadel backpack, we've got uh, Gremlin stuffed animal, we've got deck boxes, sleeves, playmats, dice, it's crazy. And our other sponsor, Card Kingdom, is also awarding some prize winners as well. And, you know, Josh and I wanted to get in on the fun. We'll be giving away some free Game Nights t-shirts to some lucky winners. You know, those t-shirts look amazing, and I love whenever we get tweeted pictures of people wearing their Game Nights t-shirts, so winners, please give us those. Yes, please do. Okay, so there's a ton of stuff to win. Here's how to enter. On our Facebook page, go to the post about this Game Nights episode and click the share button. If you're on Twitter, tweet a link to this episode and use the hashtag Game Nights. That's how we'll track it. And we'll be announcing the winners of all these awesome giveaways on Twitter and Facebook since that's where you have to go to enter exactly one week from the release of this episode. So pay attention because you might have won a ton of awesome stuff. Very exciting. All right, thank you, everyone. Good luck to everyone that has entered, and we will see you next time. Oh, boy, Jimmy, what a cool dude. Maybe they shouldn't kill him first next time so that they can see how cool his deck is. Yeah, it's like they've been watching the podcast for three years and just want to see what he's going to do. Oh, but that's fine, because we're going to see Josh go off for the 17th time on game nights. All thanks to Gaia's Cradle. Hey, I was the guy who's great. Hey, Jimmy, you know you could have put that card in your deck too, right? What are you talking about? I play nice, fair magic. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs>